um, I'd like to introduce Lisa Reeves from the Cookville Pregnancy Center. Um, I contacted Lisa and asked her to come to DeKalb County and partner with us for an abstinence-based education program. Um, we're required by law, according to our rate, to re um, require family planning, and Lisa's here to kind of nutshell explain what she will teach if we choose to partner with her and answer any questions that you might have. Yes, well first, I just want to thank you for having me. Um, I've been teaching um, abstinence education through the Cookville Pregnancy Clinic now for um, just over four years. Our program has been in effect for over 10 years in Putnam County, but we're also in White County and in Overton County. Um, what I wanted you to know about us, first of all, is we're a pregnancy clinic, and we see girls who are teenagers come into our clinic on a regular basis in a, in a situation they didn't want to be in. So what we have found is the only way we can be preventative <laughs> is to try to go into the schools and talk to students about the choices that they are making before they find themselves in that situation. And so we go in and we talk about and help them understand not only the risks that are associated with teen pregnancy, but the risks that are associated with sexually transmitted diseases and emotional consequence. And we also talk to them about healthy relationships and, and boundaries to make in their lives. Um, I wanted you to see on the very first page of that packet, the ten Tennessee, um, and, and actually the Center for Disease Control puts out all the information according to um, states um, about pregnancy rate per 1,000. And I put for you just one page of that report because it's a big, <laughs> a big report, but I gave you the report that just shows you your pregnancy rate for the age 15 to 17 age group. That pregnancy rate is, if you can see, we highlight it for you, is 35.3. The state law, which is the next page in your packet, um, this is the, the newest bill put out by Tennessee. This tells you on the second page that if your rate is over 19.5, you are required to have some type of abstinence education to try to address that number. I wanted to tell you a little bit about this law because this is something that's very important to me. Last, well, two years ago in Nashville, there were some um, inappropriate things done, okay, in a school setting, and that prompted some legislation to be made. This is the most conservative legislation in our country, and I will tell you, we were so proud that we didn't have to change one thing that we did to accommodate this law. Our heart is to be above reproach. I have three kids. I have a freshman in high school. I have a sixth grader and a third grader. And the way that I approach this material is that I talk to children just the way that I would if their parents were in the room. And I always strive to do everything that I can, again, to be above reproach. Um, and so we were just so pleased that this law, even though it is super conservative, we were glad because it showed valid, you know, some validation to what we had already been doing. Um, it outlines a lot of what you can and can't say. If you're ever curious about that or interested about that, I'd be glad to, to answer you know, whatever, whatever you have on that. Um, the next couple pages are just assurance of compliance on our curriculum. It's called Think on Point. It's um, published out of Chattanooga. Um, and they have, this page is the assurance of compliance on a federal level, which is what you had to get years ago to get any abstinence funding. But then the next page is the assurance of, of compliance on our Tennessee law that I just showed you. And then the next page is a um, permission slip that we use in Putnam County. We do not allow a student in our classroom without a permission slip because I'm a mom too. <laughs> and I don't want anybody talking to my kid about such a sensitive topic unless I've given that permission. And that is something that the state law requires as well now. Um, so that's just a sample of that permission slip, and then I've given you um, just the packet of information that we use along with lecture um, in the classroom with the students. The material is designed for eight days. Can you believe that? Nobody's going to give me eight days anywhere to be able to talk in a classroom. So we've condensed this material down to about two days, two classroom um, visits to, a, to a, a group of students and we go through this packet. This is the middle school packet. Next is the high school packet. So you can kind of see some of the things we touch on. And then the very last thing in the packet is my certification through the National Abstinence Education Association. That was a mouthful. I'm sorry. <laughs> so do you have any questions? 
we would like to do this at the Cowboys School with the middle schoolers, the Cowboys Middle School with the middle schoolers, and then at the high school and the wellness classes. Yes, available for both male and female. Well, what I have done in the past is it depended on how the schools wanted to do that. What we're doing, it is not the same talk you would give in fifth or sixth grade that's sure. more puberty oriented. This is just more in general, um, talking about the things that you'll see in that packet. I have had schools segregate classes before, but when you do that, it takes away, obviously, additional class time, um, and it's a matter of just scheduling. Um, you know, like I said, in Putnam County, most of my classes are mixed. Um, at a middle school level, um, occasionally I'll have a, a group in White County that likes to divide it if it works out. But I try to be flexible and accommodate whatever that particular school <coughs> wants. I think it would be good to have them together. Just by speaking with Lisa, there's some activities that she does with the boys and the girls, um, kind of some eye-opening activities. Um, that's definitely up to the principals if they would rather do that um, an all male class or an all female class or mixed. Well, and what I found is it's, it's interesting. When you have an all girls class, the girls will ask a lot of questions that they don't often ask in front of boys. But when you have an all boys class, having girls in the class kind of simmers them down a little bit. And then, but, but either way, I, again, I'm flexible. Um, and willing to do whatever makes people the most comfortable. But what you'll find, again, is we're not doing or saying anything that isn't in a, a wellness classroom book anyway. Does that make sense? It's not like we are, um, you know, I really don't follows, feel like it's... It follows our curriculum. The STDs are in the curriculum in, in the high school, the wellness. Right. I mean, you're doing that in a mixed group, group group anyway. And it will only be two days, about a 45-minute class, two days. We'll do that at the middle school through guidance and at the high school through wellness classes. So we won't be affecting any schedules or having to rearrange schedules or anything like that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.